Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to explain you one of the most important thing, which is multi-threading, which most students don't know, or especially script kiddies, those people who just write linear programs, who don't know how to run two while loops at the same time. And in this video, I'm going to show you this really amazing feature, which is provided by operating system. So first, in order to understand this, we have to understand what is a program, which is here, you can see. So program is just a set of instructions all right so let me zoom in more so this pro okay i zoomed in a lot so this program here is just a set of instructions so for example if i program you to just you know sit up and just go to a gym and then do some treadmill and then go back to your home so it's a series of instruction right this is so cool like you can program you can instruct your computer what to do but who does that okay who in the end of the day who do all this thing it's this thing cpu he's like the hero okay he's the most uh you know coolest thing actually the most hottest thing especially if you're using gen 2 all right so he is me okay so he he got no time he's a busy person he's like a ceo of a company what he do is is the most critical work he's like the kind of things which you know only he can do so in the end of the day, CPU is just a calculator. So you just do addition, subtraction, and moving some values, register values here and there. In case if you don't know assembly, don't worry, you, you are still going to get it. It's a really simple, simple concept. People always complicate these kind of things, but it's really simple, okay? So CPU is just a calculator. Uh, it's just me, okay? It's the most coolest person or coolest thing inside your system, okay? So yeah, so here we got a program and these are the instructions and the cpu is going to execute this instruction but what happened in middle that's that's what we are going to understand so these programs exist in our disk so this is like you know in your if you go in your bin bin directory you will see the binaries of dwm so it's just you know uh the ones and zero instructions and it's in our disk and when we execute them the os loads in it in the ram so let me zoom in so what happened is we create a process. So when you run any command in your computer, it just creates a process unless it get terminated and this process get loaded in RAM. Okay. So here you can see we got multiple process. So these process, think of it like this is a discord process. This is, um, you know, telegram process. I don't know why you guys are running these things. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, you, you got multiple process like DWM process or Firefox process. And sometimes these programs uh, even spawn more processes. Okay, depends on the condition. <clears throat> so now suppose you write a program, a C program and or, or maybe C++ program. And you just want to run two while loops by using just one process. Now you might wonder, wait a second, how, how I'm going to do at same time. So it's like you you have two infinite loops and you just want to run it at same time so basically if you think about it you just want to run two series of instruction at same time so previously the kind of programs which noobs write okay the pro kind of programs which noobs write they just have series of instructions and they just execute it go download my wallpapers go do this you know what go send a message to my friend okay it's a series of instruction which is a linear but if you want to do it parallelly, if you want to download three wallpapers at same time, you know, think about it. It's so cool. Like we are downloading three wallpapers at same time by not using multiple processes or by just using one process. So what we have to do in order to do this, we have to run multiple set of instructions. So this is just one set of instruction. We can, we have to run multiple set of instructions at same time. Now, this is really important to understand how we are going to do this. Well, thankfully, in modern days, uh, when we get operating systems like Linux, we got so much cool stuff going on. Like since we wanted to run so many programs at the same time that in operating system, there is this feature which is provided by people like Linus Toward. Uh, I don't know like who, who is the inventor of this, but we call it threads. So what happened is inside processes by the help of operating system, something I'm going to explain what we can have is if I zoom in, I don't know if I can zoom in now. Okay. I can. So if you look close, 
inside these processes so for example this is a discord process and you are chatting with two of your girlfriends okay so uh, there is uh, the series and you, you just want to run a program uh, which is just going to send proposal to both the girls okay at same time infinitely so what you can do by just using one process you can run multiple series of instructions so one series of instruction is like you know send you know proposal to mikasa or it's it's just a series like go to the tab or whatever like the text box and just write this and this and this and send it and at the same time you got another series of instruction for the other chick all right so yeah you got two threads two series of instruction inside the same program in the same python script or a c program in the same binary and you just execute it so what will happen is from the ram okay operating system is going to maintain a table so this table think of it like a you know like a waiting space okay for for so the what 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 these set of instructions will go through in the end of the day like it's going to get executed by me okay the cpu the coolest person or the hottest whatever so cpu is valuable he's the cool dude okay or the hot dude whatever okay god damn it so yeah cpu don't have any time cpu is like you know what i am important and i got no time i don't have time to there are so many instructions we got these days in computers there are so many programs run so many instruction i don't have time to manage which instructions to run on what all right i just run instructions okay so it's like if i am a chef and i just cook cool stuff quickly so i i cook you know potato okay who cook potato all right so anything all right so i i cook rice pretty quick okay i really don't know any fancy food name i i just create cake it's not okay i just create cake really quick okay so i don't have like i'm not going to deal with customers with their demands i i just get the demand like i just get cake i'm not going to see their faces okay so this is where the creator of operating system developed this thing this what you are seeing in the middle so this bitch here okay i hate this thing but i have to explain this this is the manager okay so he's the motherfucker he is like you know what i am going to be the slave of the you know most coolest thing in computer the calculator me okay i'm going to this be the slave and i'm going to manage your time i'm going to decide who needs to get executed because there are so many programs you know there are we got telegram we got you know like things like firefox and so many programs with their series of instructions different different so i'm going to manage like who is going to get executed now what happened is inside these process so you write a python program there is a feature where you can write multiple series of instructions inside one process so what happened there is a it, it just collects all these threads so it doesn't collect the process the process doesn't get collected uh, it's the series of instructions the thread is just the series of instructions all right it's a if you go technical it's stack frame but whatever so it's just like a series of instruction it can be anything okay so it's like add then divide then multiply then just move some register here and there and you know just these kind of silly it it might sound silly to you but yeah these kind of instructions all right so we just create a list of the head of all these instructions because if we get the head we can move to the tail okay and then what happened is the scheduler he decides which series is going to get executed by the most coolest person and coolest person don't have any idea okay so he's just going to get some instruction random in instruction and it's just going to execute it so suppose now the thing is how scheduler is going to decide well it's pretty simple some series of instruction which means thread have higher priority so for example if you're running some process dunst and dunst got a notification of bugs writers new video well that's a high priority okay so scheduler is going to pick it and just pull it in cpu now the thing is if cpu the coolest person is running something someone else thread okay so it depends all right the priority it depends on a lot of stuff so scheduler might wait or scheduler can even just pull that 
thread out of the CPU, like from here, he's just going to pull the thread out and he's going to be like, you know what, Box Writer video is more important, so just execute it. Okay, so I don't, I'm confused right now. Who is whose slave? Okay, so yeah, so let's just move on. So suppose if there is some thread with lower priority, suppose you are running your Firefox and the YouTube website is giving some notification or uh, distributes video. So that's a low priority. So thread is going to be like, you know, we can, we can run you later. Okay. Now the interesting thing, what happened is we got so many threads and now you might say, okay, so works, this doesn't make sense. Like how scheduler is actually going to decide who have higher priority. Well, if you think really deep thread, uh, this manager is like a God. Okay. It's a, it's some program actually it's written by kernel. It's a, it's a kernel program, but I don't know. So. Threads actually work in mysterious ways. It can it can switch between these threads, the series of instruction anytime. So at one second, okay, at at particular second, it is running some thread for Telegram, for suppose, and at the at the point microsecond later, it's just running some you know some Discord thread or I don't know like why I'm just keep saying these proprietary stuff. Okay, let's just think of some <clears throat> whatever. All right, so move on. Sorry for my oh <clears throat> okay. All right, move on. So what happened is CPU is going to run these threads and it's going to switch quickly. Now, the interesting thing is when you write a program, you can actually have multiple threads in one single process, okay, in one single program. So there is this library provided by Python and you can use it. You don't really have to go into the deep of how OS is doing things, okay, how this kernel is doing things. You can just use C++ modules or there is this library, uh, threading library in Python. It comes by default and you can just use it and run two while loops at the same time. And in the next video, I'll show you how this happened. But right now the story is there are threads and this scheduler is going to switch between threads quickly and decide what CPU is going to execute. Now, there are a lot of bad things about this. The one very bad thing about this is that this switch happens uh, at random. I mean, as a programmer, when you're writing a Python program, you don't know when this switch is going to happen. So the downside of this is, suppose you write a process or a program where you want to run two while loops at the same time and you want to synchronize it. For example, one while loop is doing um well one while loop is calling for exam okay it's it's changing some value or it, it's calling for some network call okay it, it's sending a signal to gnu.org and it's waiting for some response and when you get response in this thread you just want to execute something in thread two now what happened is the you don't have control over switching so this this can can get you know this can create some issues all right and when we should use threading, when it's beneficial. Well, first of all, if you have a problem which you want to solve with programming, well, you can divide things and then run multiple threads. So this is better because your problem will get solved faster, right? Because you can run multiple loops. So if you have a bigger problem, you can run multiple loops and just divide that problem into multiple loops. But the thing is, this can create issues. It depends on the condition. So think of CPU as me and think of these are like some people with their demands. Okay. If I get a demand by some person and he's like, you, you know what Bucks, I want www.youtube.com. So I'm going to be like, you know what, I'm going to send a request for you, but it's going to take some amount of time. It's going to take hundred milliseconds. And my time is so valuable that I'm not going to sit for you here. Okay. So please get the fuck out of my room. Okay. And so I can do something else. You know, so I can just work for someone else, like some other thread. Now he's not going like, I'm not going to say it. Okay. I'm too cool to say it. So I, my scheduler is going to say it. So yeah, my manager is going to just, you know, I want to take, talk to my manager, like something like that. Okay. So he's going to just uh, throw, throw him away. So that's good all right so if you got some networking task or if you got some input output stuff it's really cool to use threads it's going to save your time you know so you got multiple threads so for example you you write a program and you want to download four wallpapers and you write four threads so just let's just assume these are 
four threads okay so you're downloading one wallpaper you just send a request and now you just suddenly start the second download and then you send the request and then you start the third download now all these download all these calls happen to the server and server is going to send all these files at same time so this is good now it depends on the bandwidth of server a lot of other things but this is good this is cool we are making progress okay so yeah that's cool and the the priority depends like if some server returns then it 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 have higher priority okay so for input out okay this is not just networking if you're copying some movie files okay if you're sending some movie file to some friends by using pen drive then uh, this cpu doesn't do anything when you transfer files okay so there is some other unit some other ic so yeah you, cpu just sends a request you know transfer the files and then cpu can just execute some other threads all right so this is cool you can do it with python and once you start multi-threading you will realize how horrible programming can be how much this scheduler can make you cry because things goes very wrong especially if you try to synchronize things but when you should not use threads well if there is some task which is cpu intensive if somebody come to me and he's like you know what works i got some really good math problem for you can you solve it i'm like yeah i can solve it but if you got any other task with you any other series of thread like series of instruction then you know what i'm not going to execute it you know like it's it's going to be so complicated that i'm just going to you know throttle and the other tasks will die most probably so most of the time when you do cpu intensive work then you know using th use thread is a really bad practice at that time you should use multiprocess i'll make another video about it but yeah multiprocess is really good at the time you you can have multi because the thing is multiprocess can use multiple cores of cpu so it's not just operating system which are providing features like multi-threading it's also cpus which are getting so advanced this is that uh, it's providing multiple cpus so it's not me there are four people like me or i don't know like there are a lot like it, course depends okay so yeah that's it i'll see you in the next video i'll show you some example in python like and then i'll talk about locking because sometimes there is some variable and two threads at the same time try to change that variable so it it, it gets ugly so yeah i'm pretty sure if uh, okay i don't know like if you got anything or not but yeah i just wanted to make this video thanks for watching